What's up, everybody? Carolina Jackpot coming at you Tuesday evening at September 18th, 2018. It's 9-18-18. And guess what that means? Yeah, we're only about five days away from South Carolina vs. Vandy. 4 p.m. on the SEC Network on Saturday afternoon, <clears throat> live from Vanderbilt Stadium. And uh, I know what you guys are thinking. Woo, I'm going to change the channel right now because this idiot's just going to sit here and blabber, blah, 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 about how the South Carolina Gamecocks are so great, how South Carolina is a force to be reckoned with. They are about to break out, how they're going to make Vanderbilt their basic bitch on Saturday afternoon. No, none of that's true. I wouldn't do that. Y'all don't know me. Hey, but listen, this is going to be, in my opinion, a really good game. South Carolina versus Vanderbilt has been close uh, the past five, six years. Uh, South Carolina does hold a 23-4 to uh, series uh, lead over Vanderbilt, and we've won the past 10 matchups, have not lost since 2007. Yeah, I uh, wonder if we can work on one of those uh, Florida versus Kentucky type streaks. I don't know. Probably be hard to do that. But we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. Saturday afternoon, though, you know, Vanderbilt comes into the game. They're 2-1. and one. Had a couple of pretty good wins over uh, Middle Tennessee State and Nevada. And then the loss last week, of course, on the road against Notre Dame. Notre Dame disappointed me a lot. Notre Dame, in my opinion, is a mirage. Uh, it looks great from a distance, but when you get close, it's not so great. There's a lot of problems there. I thought Notre Dame would cover that spread. They did not. They disappointed me. Therefore, I will not pick Notre Dame to cover the spread in any more games this season. Very disappointed in them. And, you know, they're going to win about eight or nine ball games this year just based off the sheer fact their schedule is trash. It's trash. And... Nobody thought it was trash going into it. Everybody was like, man, they got to go to Virginia Tech. They got to play Florida State. They got to go to Wake Forest. Man, they're tough. Man, none of those teams are any good. They go to Wake Forest this weekend. That's going to be a win. Wake Forest didn't look good against Boston College. Florida State, we all know about them. I, everybody's already sliced, diced, and just filleted them. I ain't going to talk to them about them. And uh, Virginia Tech, they're a mirage, too. They're not as good as you think they are just because, woo, they beat Florida State. Well, uh, everybody beats Florida State. Samford almost beats Florida State. So what does that tell you? So in my opinion, Notre Dame is just not that good. They're not. They struggled against Ball State. And, yes, they beat Michigan at home in that first game of the season first big game of season but was it really a big game michigan ain't looked all that great i mean they're they're not impressive as either so my thing is is vanderbilt really really good or is notre dame really really bad I, it's uh probably a combination of both kind of leaning towards notre dame's probably really not that good okay i mean do you, can you name anybody on their team besides brandon winbush i can't I have a hard time doing it brian kelly there's oh never mind that's the coach Anyway, getting back to the task at hand, Carolina, you can argue that, well, they're going to come out rusty. They're going to come out rusty, hadn't played in two weeks. They got the butt kicked last time they played. You know, they didn't get to beat play Marshall. You know, they probably lost to them too. Marshall would have but, but rushed the boat on them. No, that wouldn't have happened. We would have defeated them this past weekend, but we didn't get a chance to. And, you know, Tater fans will sit here and tell you. I heard Tater fans on the radio arguing, well, South Carolina could have played that game if they wanted to. <laughs> uh, no, you couldn't. Lives were at stake, fool. You didn't know what was going to happen in the lower part of the state. You didn't know where the first responders would be needed at. So get out of here with that mess. We'll just go on and put that in record books and say the game was canceled, but it was probably going to be a dub. South Carolina. Coming off the Georgia game, didn't look that good. You know, we we were balanced on a couple of drives in the first half between the run and pass. Was we had some balance? What happened was balanced. We scored. We went down and scored. We kicked a field goal. We scored a touchdown. Third quarter, we got absolutely bombarded, railroaded, beat down. Any uh, verb or adjective that you want to choose to put there. We took it, okay, and we took that L, and I'm going ahead and say it in these videos that I've made. I'll admit we took that L. Georgia is a good team, but my thing about it is you'll have Georgia fan and, you know, any other fan of these SEC teams, uh, 
in Facebook, YouTube, wherever, talking about how sorry South Carolina is, how they're they're a joke. Uh, you know, we thought that you know they should be ranked. They were so much worse than we thought they were going to be. Blah blah blah. But in the next breath, they want to talk about how great Georgia is. So were we that terrible, or did we lose to a really good team, bordering on elite? I think we lost to a really good team, bordering on elite. They had a good game plan, and we couldn't uh, phase that game plan. We couldn't muster anything against that game plan, in other words. So, you know, they can argue the fact that, well, Kirby took a knee on his buddy Will Muschamp. You know, Muschamp was a few years older than him. He took a knee against him so he wouldn't run up the score. Well, I can also argue the fact that if Jake Bentley hadn't been throwing 12 to 15-yard intermediate-type routes to Debo Samuel, who was obviously covered up by DeAndre Baker and wasn't making those catches instead of the – Three, five yards, a little Duncan Dinkin to Debo Samuel, that kind of stuff that he could have been effective on, running the ball a little bit more. I can argue that point, that we would have scored more points. Anyway, getting back to Vanderbilt. <clears throat> Has Vanderbilt ever been an intimidating place to play? No, it hadn't. Do y'all remember last year? They started off 3-0. They beat Kansas State. Woo-hoo! Then they started talking about, we want Alabama. We want Alabama. <laughs> what happened? They remember. I remember it was the last time a Vanderbilt fan cheered. Yeah, it was. They got absolutely curb stomped. Terrible. 59 nothing. they lost. And that was with Jalen Hurts at quarterback. <laughs> it was terrible. But you guys, I mean, you're a good team. You're a really good Sun Belt Conference team. That's what I think of y'all. South Carolina is better than you on uh, depth, on uh, the defensive side of the ball, we're better than you across the lines of scrimmage. Uh, you know, we have better skill position players than you. Our quarterback's better than yours. He just, you know, sometimes he don't he don't act like it, but he's better than yours. And uh, and we're going to beat you on Saturday. That's just a fact, plain and simple. I mean, how many fans are we going to be able to jam, are we going to be able to jam into that high school stadium of yours? 20, 30,000 Gamecock fans going to go up there. Y'all ain't going to have no fans there. You don't have any fans. <laughs> Your little stadium looks like a toy. <laughs> it looks like something some little uh, red-headed kid with freckles and glasses made with, like, the, the construction glue and this stuff down in his mom's basement, like back in the 70s with the felt, you know, uh, pool table over here and, uh, like, the, the big shag rug over here going on, and he's building this little, this little scale model of some cars and a little tiny toy Vanderbilt Stadium, which they tried to make look like a real football stadium. You guys aren't winning that game. I can't believe that this spread is two points. That is nowhere near enough points. We are going to go out there, and we are going to lay it to you, especially in the second half. First half might be kind of close. I'm thinking we may be going into halftime like a tie ball game with us with our mm, – Jimmy's all drawn up because we were all nervous about it. But second half, we're going to come out there. We're going to beat you guys down. Kyle Shermer does not stand a chance against that boom cock defensive line. Uh, your, your receivers, Kalaja, Elijah, Lipscomb, uh, I don't know who your running back is. It's insignificant. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to take care of you guys. And uh, Derek Mason is going to be giving another one of his little solemn press conferences. Like, uh, hit it. He's, Mr. He's Mr. Emotional, ain't he? He's, he's Mr. Boy, I get fired up after these games, ain't he? <laughs> you know, dude's facial expression never changes. I've never seen it change one time. Maybe if it did and you got a little bit fired up, you'd be a little bit better of a football coach and your team might win a few more games, Derek. Just a little tip there. Gamecocks, we got this one. 28-13, Boomcocks take it in Nashville. We'll call it uh, uh, Columbia North for uh, all intents and purposes. Woo! I'm going to get out of here because we're going on 10 minutes. That's a long time for me to travel. It's a great day to be a big old Gamecock. This Saturday is a new beginning. Woo! We're going to reel off about 10 straight, baby. Nine straight. And then ten, maybe 10 straight. We might make it 10 straight. I don't know. We're going to reel off a bunch of them in a row. Woo! Go Gamecocks. Go Coach Boom. Go Debo. Go Brian Edwards. Go Rico Dowdle. Go... Everybody on that team, let's have a big day in Nashville on Saturday. Ah, 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 woo, go Cox!